Hello everyone, welcome back to Diagonal Move. My name is Neil and today we are going to look at the contents of this repurposed tin of biscuits, otherwise known as Airborne in my pocket. One of my favourite, favourite filler games. It's a mad cross between a dungeon crawling game and a historical war game. It is quick, it's got basic simple rules, but those rules are then expanded into a wealth of variation and variety. The game is designed by Emmanuel Aquin, I think I've pronounced that right, apologies if I haven't, and it's a variation of a game called Zombie in My Pocket by Jeremiah Lee and uh, Aaron Tubb uh, had some involvement in that original game as well. It takes about half an hour to play. You're basically a soldier who has landed uh, away from his unit in the uh, hours after D-Day and you're exploring first the, the, the outside locations and then finding a, a military bunker, getting through the military bunker to the gun control area, blowing it up and then getting out again in the hope of surviving. You have a certain amount of time to do that and that simple idea is spun into uh, so many different things. There's basic rules, there's um, advanced rules, there's scenarios, there's campaigns, there's a, it's a solo game, but there's a multiplayer option. Each one of these pages here is a scenario, each, each, each thing on here is a scenario that I haven't yet got around to printing to, to making. There's so much you can do with this particular game, and all balls falls out of this very simple idea of moving a piece, seeing what you find, and doing something based on a card draw. Fantastic game. I'm going to do a whole playthrough at the moment. And of course, the best thing about the game is it's completely free. It's there on it's a print and play, it's there on Board Game Geek. I think there was a um a Kickstarter at some point in the past. The game itself is the mid to late 2000s Um and at some point there was a Kickstarter or, or something along those lines to do a commercial version. But the original print and play stuff is still on there, together with all the expansions, all the scenarios, everything you could possibly need, all you need to do is print it off and build it. Fantastic game. Really, really fun, light filler game. Thoroughly recommend it to anyone who's got a spare half an hour to play a historical themed dungeon crawler. With that said, let's move on and uh, hope you enjoy. The basics of Airborne in my pocket are very simple. You'll take your pawn or your cube or whatever you choose to represent your character and you will move it. You'll reveal a tile, depending on whether you're inside or outside. Take note of any effects or actions that need to be taken on the tile. Then you'll resolve a, an, a, an event which is variable depending on whether you're inside or outside. And then you'll have an opportunity to rest and recover any injuries or health or so on. There may be combat. And as you progress, what you need to do is you need to find the explosives, which are at the ammo dump. In order to do a great many things in here, you have to do what's known as resolve an event, which simply means take an extra card, do the event. Sometimes you'll have to discard an event card without looking at it. Eventually, you'll find first the explosives, and then you'll find the bunker door. When you get inside the bunker, you need to find the gun control. Place the explosives in the gun control and then get out again back to the drop zone before time runs out. The game starts at 7 o'clock in the morning. If you reach 10 o'clock without completing your objective and escaping again, the game is over. If you lose health and you start at six. If you lose health to down to zero, you, you, you lose the game as well. You can lose the health through events or through combat. Very straightforward, simple game. There is a lot of variation in how you play it, so I, I may need to check the, the rules from time to time just to make sure certain things are being done correctly. Um, the version of the game we're going to be playing is the advanced game, which means we do get to choose a special operative and these operatives are things are, are characters like the members of the 82nd airborne um, 101st airborne mixed unit of various nations 
uh, commandos, uh, spies, parachute regiment, French resistance, that kind of thing. And each of those will have a certain ability or abilities that vary from what you will find in the basic game, which does not use those characters. The, um, the other difference between the basic game and the advanced game is that rather than discarding two cards, two event cards at the beginning of a turn, you discard just the one. There are also an advanced game secondary objective. So in addition to finding the explosives and sabotaging gun control, you, the first event card you reveal will have a location and that will represent a secondary objective, which must also be completed before you escape the game. Okay, I will tidy this all up, pull a special uh, operative and we'll get started. Okay, everything's set up, ready to roll. We have our all important timer and event deck, outside locations, inside locations, secondary objective card, and the items we may use, and we're going to be playing here, uh, depending of course on what we draw. So all that's left now is to draw uh, a special special operative to see who we're going to be during the game, and the one that I've chosen is the Gunner. So SFC Floyd Manning, 82nd Airborne, 505th PIR. 2nd Battalion Charlie Company, carries an MG42, uh, to load it we have to fight enemies with a special um, icon on them and that will give us an extra use. Resolve an extra event at the ammo dump to gain a use. The power is 6 outside, 4 inside but we cannot pick up any additional items. Normally you have a Colt pistol plus um, 2 additional items that you can carry. Uh, and any free ones on top of that, but mostly it's two. Uh, these characters vary that quite significantly. Okay, so that's who we are. So we start off with a, a machine gun. Interesting bit of backstory in the manual about the the character that we're playing, uh, SFC Floyd Manning. He's actually found a German machine gun, which if anyone who is observant may have noted that, but he's actually found a German machine gun and he cannot fight um, unless he first fights an enemy with the the satchels there. So that means he's going to start the game with zero power, zero ammo. Um, that's going to make things quite challenging, quite challenging indeed. Um, and of course, even more so as we start the game with the weapon, it's actually empty. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a cube to highlight when the... When the uh, machine gun is loaded and when it isn't. Okay, let's get our, our our machine gunner on the road and finding this bunker and completing the mission. First thing we need to do is discard unseen one of the one of the event cards. We do not see that card. Second thing we need to do is decide what we're going to do on a turn and the first thing we need to do is move. And we're going to move here. We then reveal the location. We found some barbed wire, which means we cannot evade combat. Normally when you have a combat, you have the option of fighting or evading. Obviously, in the barbed wire, we cannot evade the combat. So what we need to do then is reveal the card, perform the event. If we find anybody we fight, we need to take note of the effect of the barbed wire. This first card will also reveal to us the location of our secondary objective, which we also must complete in order to win the game. Okay. So the event is an out and we're outside, the shell has exploded nearby, losing one health. That's not the best start. Our location is a half track. So we have to find the half track, tile, resolve an event, extra event, and then we get that secondary objective. The machine gun here is a um an item which you can search for on certain uh points in the game. We don't look at that usually unless we're doing a search. Okay, so that's the end of our first event. Um, we can choose to rest, but I won't do so here. Resting will restore our health, of course, um, and instead we move on to the next next tile, uh, deciding where we're going to move, and we move this way. And we have found the supply truck. And this is in the tile I was mentioning where you can you can search to gain an extra item. Now we have, I do have that powerful weapon, but we cannot carry items. So I think what we'll do here is we'll just resolve the event and not search, depending on what happens in the event, of course. We found a 
KR98K rifle, power of two. Ah, oh, dear. Um, should we exchange? No, that's not exchange. I don't want to rest. So we need to move on to the next part of the turn, which will be to move again. Um, we can't go anywhere. There's no, no, no exit, so we have to go back. And again, taking note of the effect of the barbed wire. And here we have four SS soldiers yelling at us. They, we do have those satchels, so that means if we win this combat, we will be able to fire our machine gun on the next combat. Um, okay, now combat is quite straightforward. You simply take note of the power that they have, or the number of enemies that you have against this. In this case, it's four, and our power is five. Deduct. Sorry, our power is zero and our life is five. So we deduct our power, our machine gun power, from the number of soldiers. In this case, it is four and we have a power of zero, so we're losing four life and we reduce ourselves down from five down to one, which is a fairly severe beginning, but we do at least have a loaded machine gun for the next, the next time. On this particular occasion, I am going to rest, because if I don't rest, I will be dead next turn, probably. So let's rest, which means we discard unseen a card, and then we recover three life points. Moving on to the next tile, we have found the half track. Okay, infantry men and SS soldiers are plus two power here, uh, or plus two in number, which we calculate for our combat results, um, but we do need to resolve our, we do need to resolve an extra event to achieve our secondary objective. Okay, uh, yeah, half track, and if we do succeed in our secondary objective, we will gain a reduction in an outside strength of enemy forces which could be quite useful. But first thing we need to do is resolve our, resolve our first event before going on to the tile. And we have allied planes flying overhead. Nothing happens. So to complete our secondary objective, we need to resolve a second guard. And we hear gunfire in the distance, which means we have finished our secondary objective. And our reward, as I mentioned, was a reduction in enemy power. So let's just place a cube on that card to remind ourselves that we've done our secondary objective. Fantastic. We just need to find the bunk now and get out. Unfortunately, of course, we're a fair amount all the way through our first hour of the day, and we only have three hours of the day in which to complete our entire mission. So should I rest or should I not? I think I will take this opportunity to rest. It's discarding an extra card, but if I don't rest, there's a good chance of being killed fairly soon. Um, Okay, now we do need to move, so I'll move here. And we will take the next outside location, which is a field hospital. Okay, field hospital, it's plus one health if you end your turn on that tile, which we will do. So, but first, obviously, we do need to resolve an event. We'd normally only leave a tile if you were evading combat, really. I think that's the main reason we'd leave a tile. And in this instance, we have found a D ration chocolate bar one health, which is great. And then we finish our turn here, we gain an extra health due to the effect of the tile. We're now up to nine health, which is our maximum that we can have. It's going pretty well, really. <laughs> um, okay, next tile, and it'll be the last of this hour. We have found a panzer. Ooh, minus one health, should we end our turn here? So. That's a concern, particularly if we come into combat. Um, and so let's reveal that final event of the turn. And it is four infantrymen firing at us. There, are, there is no symbol, so our machine gun, although we can use it this time to negate the um, effect of the combat, we won't be able to reload it and use it again. So we need to bear that in mind. Okay, so we will use our, our machine gun. It's now, now empty. We do lose a health because we're ending our turn. And we're also ending the hour, 
there as well. Okay, so how does that work? It's quite simple. You just move your cube, your timer cube down one hour, shuffle the deck, discarding one, and continue as you were before. Okay, discarded card, and let's go again. Ammo dump, excellent. We found what we need to get the explosives. Okay, resolving an extra event as with the um, half track secondary objective. So, first objective though, four SS soldiers fire at yell at us. We have the pack, so we will be reloaded at the end of this particular phase. However, we have no power on any of our guns because our gun is un currently out of ammo, therefore, we lose all four health. Normally you would have deduct, if you had, perhaps if you had a Colt pistol, which is your usual starting weapon, you might deduct one or two from that number and then you lose two health. But this particular character, we are losing health at a rapid rate because we're out of ammo. But we do have that um, ammo pouch there, that, that pack, which means we can reload for the next time we fight. In order to gain those explosives though, most important thing, we do need to resolve another event. And those allied planes are still flying overhead, which is fantastic, which means we get our free explosives. Now they do not count against our carry limit, they are essential to complete the objective, so we get to carry those, even though our normal limit is zero um, for this character. Okay, one more tile then, which is going to be the bunker door. Now what we need to bear in mind here, this is only one exit. Um, so the question is, do we chance our luck and draw the tile here in the hope that we will have a means in? If we do not have a means into the door, we're basically lost and we lose the game. However, or we could go back. And if we go back, we then do have to have the extra risk of fighting more, more, more enemies and also extra time spent doing it. Um, but I feel lucky. Let's go on an, ex on a, on an exploration into the unknown we found the bunker door. Last tile of the game. Now, if you reveal all your outside locations, you do get a free flare, which again is a free item um, when I find it. Yeah, a free flare, which allows you to uh, discard an inside tile and draw another or add a second use to the flare gun. We don't have the flare gun, but that draw another tile might come in handy. And that's a free item that doesn't count towards the um, the overall carry limit either. Okay, so let's move inside. I'm not going to rest. Oh, I'm on five health. Should I rest? If I rest here, I will have to... Oh, that really should be orientated that way if I wanted to do the game any further, shouldn't it? Um, Okay, do I want to rest? That is a question. Yes, I will rest. Let's discard that. One, two, three. Um, and then let's move into the bunker door. So we've got the entrance. Our exit is blocked now at this entrance. And in many ways, this game starts at this point to remind me of a dungeon crawler because we're hunting through the inside of a... of a... Of a, a an enemy base fighting them, fighting the monsters or the baddies, and trying to get out again with the treasure. Almost, um, there's a really nice sort of historical theme on a dungeon crawling game. Um, okay, so um, we need to resolve that that um, event for the inside event. Now, now we do move from the outside events to the inside events. Paratroopers assaulting from behind. We cannot evade the combat. They do have that satchel. That's fantastic. And we do have on our machine gun a cube, so we are we do have the ammo inside. It's worth four, so there's no effect on that combat, which is fantastic. And the fact they've got the satchel means we do keep our machine gun loaded. No need to rest now. Moving swiftly on to the next location, we can only go out the one door. And here we found storage. Okay. Can draw an extra card for an item in that location, but I won't. We reached a point now, we're about halfway through, 
really do feel the need now to find the the uh, the gun control and get on out of the door. Um, because we, when we finish, we do have to get all the way back here, and that's going to involve coming all the way around like that. Okay, so let's resolve the, the card. We spot an item in the crate. This is where we can resolve, reveal the next card to choose the item, but I'm going to opt not to do that, even though it's a free thing here, because again, it's that time we're running it. We're going to start running out of time very, very quickly. Okay, so moving along. Found the radio room. No specific effect on the radio room, but it is got, has got that 90 degree angle leading into here. If we have a bad tile, we could end up lost or trapped, um, which means we do lose the game. So, resolve the event in the radio room. Attacked by three infantry men with bayonets. If we lose health, we lose an arm and we can carry one less item permanently. Now, that's not so much of an issue for us because we don't carry items anyway, but we do not have to worry about it too much because we do have that machine gun loaded with a power of four inside so that combat is negated. Right, we may need to use our flare gun on this next, our flare cartridge on this next tile, depending on what we've got. So let's reveal, we've got prison cells. Yep, that's exactly what I was saying might happen. We end up in here, we're trapped. So I will use the flare cartridge, that very handy flare cartridge, to discard the, the prison cell tile and to draw another tile. And here we have the infirmary. This time we do have an, ex an, an exit. And here, if we end the turn on, on that tile, we will gain a health. But let's have a look. Oh, gain a health anyway, so we found some hot food. They've left the, the canteen. We're now at maximum health again. Oh, I need to move these across, don't I? Um, no need to rest, nothing else to do. Let's move. We found gun control. Okay, resolve two events here. We're going to sabotage gun control. We have an interest, yeah, we, no, we don't have an interest option because you cannot get out here. We do have to go out through the entrance. So let us resolve our first event, which is toxic fumes, loser health. Rubbish. Um, second event then to place those explosives. We trip and make a noise and you're forcing us to resolve another card. Okay, we're going to have to shuffle first. We are at the end. Um, okay. Resolving the extra card. Toxic fumes again. Uh, okay, so that's the, we have moved, already moved across the hour. We have not yet placed, I don't recall, no, we've not yet placed the, um, the explosives on our last hour. At the end of this hour, we will be dead, or we will win. One of the two options. Um, first, we need to do place those explosives. Inventory men with bayonets again. We do not have a loaded gun, so we will lose three health. Okay, but we have placed the explosives on gun control at the end of that combat. Now we need to get out of here. Successfully resolve the event, place the explosives. We do now need to get out of the building, get all the way back here to win the game. We are on our last hour. We've got four health. Not a great starting position. We've, we've not got a huge number of cards to be able to get out of the building with and get back to the back to the base. Um, so what we're going to need to do is try to be as efficient as possible with our cards um, and take advantage of any events that may allow us, allow us to move a bit further. Um, and I'll show you what I mean if it comes up. Okay, we are on red alert. So that means we look at the Red alert section of the card rather than the inside section of the card. We're in the infirmary. If we end our turn here, we gain a health. Okay. Ah, red alert. Four infantrymen jumping at us. Right. We have no ammo in our machine gun, which means we cannot fight that with any kind of uh, power of our own. Our power is zero, so we are... No. We will be dead if we don't do an evasion. Um, so... We will lose a health to evade, but we can move 
to a previously explored location. And this is where the efficiency I just mentioned comes in. If you can 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 move in your turn somewhere, you don't have to draw another event card. So we basically we don't have to draw draw an event card for here, but we have not taken the effect of extra health there. And to evade, we have lost. We've lost a health point. You can only evade into a previously explored location, but. I feel like I need to rest, but then I don't, unless we can evade a lot more combats with just a handful of cards remaining. Um, let's take the risk. Let's rest. No, let's not rest. Let's just see if we can get out. So let's move. Six SS soldiers intercept us. Wow, that's terrible. We would definitely need to try and evade again. So let's evade again, moving into the entrance. And we do lose that health. Um, this time I am going to rest because we will almost certainly be dead if we don't have to if we, if we have to evade anymore. Um, okay, let's rest. We gain three. We don't even though we are facing soldiers with the with the pack. We don't we didn't fight them, so we don't get the ammo. And we move again this time. We're outside. We've still got to go all the way around, uh, resolving the event which is hit by shrapnel, minus a health. Wow, I'm glad I rested. Um, move again. This time we're at the ammo dump where we resolve an event to gain explosives, not applicable now, um, but we do still need to resolve the event. We'll recover a grenade. Ah, oh, cannot carry it though. Damn, not so good. Okay, that's unfortunate. Um, pretty sure they're not free items. Uh, just double checking, sifting my way through the items. No, this would be the this would be the tile we would get, but there's no mention there of it being free, so we cannot carry that. Um, and grenades have to be used with another weapon. Uh, okay, turn ends. I'm not going to rest. Let's move on. Minus one health if we finish here. So let's hope we can evade. Uh, six paratroopers attack and we cannot evade. Wow, that's terrible. We have no ammo. We're dead. <laughs> that is the end of the game. Even if we had managed to evade, then that we only have one card remaining. And we would have not made it before the end of the turn anyway. Bad luck for our sergeant. Destroyed the bunker, but met an untimely end on his way back to the drop zone. Okay, that was Airborne in my pocket. I hope it's giving you a flavour of how the game works. It's a lovely, simple game, a historical themed filler game you can play in half an hour. Um, it's a game that comes with, I think, I think I mentioned it in the beginning, we have a range of scenarios available, there are expansions available, in there's, there's basic rules, advanced rules, scenario rules. Um, you can even play a multiplayer in a, in a cooperative fashion, although I've not tried that myself. Tons of things to do, all freely available over on Board Game Geek, and I have put the link down below. Um, wonderful game. I thoroughly enjoy it. I hope you've enjoyed the video and found it useful. Uh, please do think about liking, subscribing, all that sort of thing, and I will see you next time.